So yesterday we talked about the carnal mind and the, ver uh, and the spiritual mind, and we found out that the carnal mind cannot please God. We also found out that the carnal mind is enmity against God. We also found out that the carnal mind is death. But we found out that the spiritual mind is life and peace. Hallelujah. What are you going to choose? It's your choice. Uh, that's, the, that's the awesome thing about how God created us. He created us like him and then gave us a choice and said, okay, so how are you going to do this? So it's a no-brainer to me. I want to please daddy, so I'm going to operate according to the spirit mind, and uh, I want to have life and peace, so I'm going to live according to the spirit. Amen? Remember, that came from Romans chapter 8, verse uh, 5, 6, and 7. Um, look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. All righty. The last scripture in chapter 2 says, but we have the mind of Christ. That's for those of us who are born again, that are walking in the spirit. We have the mind of Christ. Look what it goes on to say. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there is envy, strife, and division among you, are you not carnal and behaving as mere men? Now again, this is calling these folks carnal Christians. Now remember what we said about the carnal mind, is enmity against God, and it's also death. And yet here Paul is saying, you're carnal Christians. In other words, they're not losing their salvation. They gave their life to Christ. They, their, their spirit is born again unto the things of God. Yet they're living their life still according to their, their uh, five senses. That's carnality. We live our lives like carnal folks. Why do we do that? Why do we allow the circumstances of life to dictate what is the truth? That's not the truth. The word of God is the truth and I have to set my mind on things of the spirit. Why? Because they're life and peace. So here it says, again it says, I could not speak to you as to uh, spiritual people but as to carnal because they were acting as mere, uh, as babes. Look with me in... Um, First Peter, I'm sorry, Second Peter. Uh, I'm sorry, it is First Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So the pure milk of the word is good, but it's for babes. All right? Isn't this amazing that God creates us in his likeness and image, then gives us the opportunity to be born again, but there's still another process called maturation. It's yours and my decision whether I want to mature as a mature Christian or I want to stay as a babe. I used this illustration last week in church. Uh, I had one of the big guys stand up. I said, look at this guy. He's strapping big, tough guy, you know, tough cowboy. And, um, and we all appreciate and love him dearly. But, uh, you know, think about this. How about if we put him in diapers and had him running around here? He wouldn't be so cute anymore, would he? He wouldn't be so fun. And yet you take that same diaper, put it on a year and a half old little boy and let him run around the, uh, the church here and everybody think, oh, how cute that is. Well, it's not cute on an adult. Someone who should be mature and still is running around with diapers is pretty disgusting. Once again, we need to set our minds on things that are of the spirit, not on things that are carnal. The carnal Christian is going to be, remain a babe in Christ running around in diapers still needing help from everybody to try and get through all his silly little problems we have here on earth and yet we should be further than that 
And tomorrow I'm going to show you that we need to be teachers by now. Once again, I'm talking about the carnal mind versus the, the spiritual mind. And we need to get a hold of this. We need to become spiritually mature. So I'm going to pick this up again tomorrow. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.